present Leon with a gift. And this is a handcrafted mezuzah case and a scroll from the famed Israeli artist Esther Shahaf to be placed on the doorpost in your home or I guess on the doorpost of your choice. <laughs> you know, in this mezuzah and the scroll, there's the portion of the Shema Yisrael taken from the Torah where God expresses his desire for us to love him and to be committed to his commandments and to teach our children about the wonders of God. And he gives us his assurance that if we place it on the door of our home, he's going to give us protection. And just as all those years ago, God sent you an angel to save you and the family, God should protect or protect you by placing this mezuzah and bring blessing and success to you and your family. I thank you very much, Rabbi. That is a beautiful present. Um, the, the prayer inside, uh, I can remember my uh, grandparents reciting it, uh, and I remember my my people in a, in a small town in Narevka. In my in my mind, it sounds like they are all reciting it at the same time. I used to stand next to my grandfather because my father was in Krakow, and I was standing in a in a, uh, a synagogue with my grandfather and watching him pray. They were so observant, and they were so. They were just, you could see their faces glowing. Two questions. How, Two. how does the Oscar, the Oscar Schindler in the movie compare to the real one? How did they compare, and then what happened to Oscar Schindler after the war? Oh, thank you very much. That's a good question, and I, I should have mentioned this. <clears throat> in my opinion, Oscar Schindler, his character, he was a better human being in real life than the way he was depicted in the movie. He did, he, he just, um, just very hard to, to describe this human being who operated within the Nazi era where the norm was to murder Jews, not to save them. And he proceeded to do that to you know, to great risk to his own life, and uh, did it anyway. Uh, and he was, I had experienced so many, you know, I can't tell you of all the kindnesses that I experienced at the hands of Schindler, where he used to call me you know, next to his, in his office and give me a piece of bread that I would share with my father and my brother in the, in the factory. And, uh, you know, when he came here, that's another thing. He came here in 1965 into Los Angeles, not here, to Los Angeles to visit. You, you know that Schindler after the war didn't have, didn't have much success and he was, you know, he traveled and he came to visit us and he went to visit his people that were on his list in Israel where he met my sister and my brother and so on. Anyway, he came to Los Angeles in 1965, and that's 20 years after he saw me last. He saw me last in 1945, and I was around 16, 15, going on 16. That's the last time he saw me. And so we went to greet him at the airport, and it was my turn to introduce myself. I, I thought maybe I better. Uh, tell him who I am because I had grown, I was a grown man, I was already at a job at the Huntington Park High School, I was already married, and um, so I started to introduce myself, but he interrupted me and he said, I know who you are, you're a little lay son, are you? Yes. No, he didn't have any children. As a matter of fact, he used to refer to his people on his list as his children. 